Hi friends, my name is Sushmil and today we are going to see F5 deployment. In the last session we had discussed about F5 fundamentals, right? how it all works and everything. Today we are going to see a few deployment scenarios that include one arm deployment, two arm deployment and end path or we call it as DSR, direct server return deployment. Three major types of deployments that we have. So let's get going. The first one is one arm deployment. Just imagine that we don't have this F5 right now, we do not have this node. Have client, internet, a router and just one node. Okay. It's very simple, right? Client goes to the, the router, router forwards it to the node, everything is working fine, no problem at all. But now, we've realized one thing that, you know, we are getting popular and this node let's say is running a service of 80 is getting a lot of traffic which is affecting the performance right so now we want to load balance so we added another node this one and also added an FI device to share the load among these nodes perfect right so now what we are going to do is we want to deploy this right so when we are talking about deployment, let's say we are very popular and if we take a downtime, stop our servers, deploy our F5 and another node, it will take a lot of time. And if we do that, then our reputation is affected, right? Our clients are affected and we might lose our popularity. So we do not want long downtimes. So in this case, what we can do is implement an FI device in this manner, the one that I have shown in here. It's called one arm deployment. You know what you have to do is you have to add this FI device in the same subnet, in the same VLAN as our nodes. Right? That means the virtual IP that we will have is going to be in the same subnet as the nodes. It's easy because of course there is a switch somewhere in here, right? They all are connected to a switch, for example, level two, uh, I mean layer two switch, right? So we just have to add a cable and a device. That's all that we'll have to do. And of course, another server in here to this, this particular port of a switch. Okay, perfect. So what are the challenges that we have with this? Let's see client let's say our virtual IP is um, 20.0.0.0 dot 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 five which is on this f5 right so what client will try to do is client will try to reach 20.0.0.5 dot 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 it goes to the router router will forward the request to 20.0.0.5 perfect what we have done in this virtual server is this is my VIP. I'm saying that load balance on pool 1. Pool 1 is this. Okay. This node is also having service 80. This node also having service 80. So pool is node colon service, right? So this is our pool member number one, pool member number two. Now we are load balancing fine, but still we have a problem. If you see, before we deployed this server and this F5 device, we had this node, right? This node has a default gateway of the router. If we want to replicate that server, this server also has the default gateway of the router what is happening just pay attention now client is going to the internet to the router router is sending the packets to f5 f5 sees that i have to load balance on node 1 and i mean sorry pool num pool member 1 and pool member 2 it sends the packet in here or in here these pool members they're going to view the packet they're going to view the request form a response 
and send to the default gateway not to the F5 but default gateway so we have asymmetric routing we are going this way and while coming back we are not going this way we are going directly to the router that's a problem it works if you want to make it work it works no problem the thing is we will not be able to utilize the full feature set of F5 Big IP LTM if you want to be able to do that then we'll have to make further changes the changes are very simple what did I say this is 20 right 20 0, 0 something let's say this is 20.0.0.5 .0 which is my virtual server right virtual server client is with source IP let's say 30.0.0.1 right destination will be 20.0.0.5 okay this packet comes to a 5 now F5 is talking to these nodes what will happen destination is changing to let's say 20.0.0.10 and 20 this is your pool number one pool number two pool member number one pool member number two right but our source is not changing source is 30.0.0.1 and when these nodes want to reach source 30.0.0.1 they are sending packets to the router what we can do is use NAT source NAT SNAT or there's another word I mean another full form for this is secured NAT perfect now you must be wondering what's happening right I'll tell you what is happening what we will do is right here we have source 30 network destination network when we will send the packets of course this packet comes to f5 now f5 is going to talk to node while doing that on f5 we will change change the source to 20 dot 0 dot 0 dot let's say 200 slash 24 we have what advantage this has is now node received a packet with a source of 20 and destination also 20 0, 0 whatever that is maybe 11 11 or 12 or 10 whatever that was right which is this right so now when 20 0, 0, 11, which is this node will try to form a response the destination will not be this destination will be this because that's that's the IP from where node received the packet right they both are in the same network do we require a router right now no router routes between the network right we need switching right now so now the packet will go back to f5 and now f5 will forward it to the router and to the client so now that makes sense right so now incoming traffic is also going through F5 and outgoing traffic is also going through F5 right that means we will be able to use the full feature set of F5 big IP that's what we wanted right so this is our one arm deployment simple to deploy and we need snatting so we cannot really have our clients IP address as it is when we are talking to the node right we need to nab that in F5 so that we can use the full feature set of F5 load balancer then we have two arm deployment in here the client IP is retained of course you can see it in here right in this case we have F5 the virtual IP is not in the same subnet as nodes and on these servers we have f5 as the default gateway so packet comes in packet goes out perfect this is two arm deployment 
scenario number one this is scenario number two two arm deployment itself in this case we have a pickle kind of a pickle of course virtual IP if you see virtual IP it's not in the same subnet as the nodes are right so thing is the packet will go from client to the virtual IP on virtual server we have mentioned that we want to load balance so packets will go here or in here okay now it depends on the servers default gateway if the default gateway that we have given on the server is f5 then we don't have a problem it's just like this but if the default gateway is this router then again we have a problem because now you can see the asymmetric routing here as well packet go in through this path go out through this path that's why client IP might not be retained why because clients IP is let's say 30001 right this goes from here and if the default gateway is F5 device then we can retain the clients IP but if the default gateway is not F5 device and it's router then the packets are going through R we might have to do natting so that we can use the full feature set of F5 device right so what we will do is in here we will do natting so that the client can go in through F5 device to the routers sorry to the servers and from servers they will come back from F5 itself this type of deployments are done in a scenario when you know sometimes in some scenarios servers also initiate connections so when server is initiating a connection we want that connection to go through the default gateway but when client is doing that through virtual IP then we want this path to be preferred while going out as well right so in this ca case we use two armed deployment so uh, then there is n path deployment which I will explain you in here uh, in here itself it's just like one arm deployment but you remember what we also call it direct server return DSR so the traffic goes in through this router goes to the F5 we balance the load but while going back see the normal scenario direct server return server is returning directly not going through F5 when I was explaining you one on deployment I told you this is fine it's not a problem it's just that we will not be able to utilize the entire feature set of F5 right so now in the last one the packets are going in going to F5 we are just doing the load balancing right no other feature set very few feature sets or very few features that we can use from F5 big IP the return traffic will go through this default gateway itself right so these are three major types of deployment scenarios that we have with F5 I hope it was informative hope to see you in the next session till then thank you very much